so hello everyone uh, welcome to this online lecture so today we are going to discuss a very important topic uh, from uh, british administration uh, administration's point of view that is about the civil services how they evolved this civil services process the judiciary and the law and order maintenance through police and military system right so first of all starting with the civil services in india so initially it was implemented by east india company to manage its commercial operations obviously when it was a commercial ent entity it was main it was made to maintain its commercial activities only however uh, it went into a transformation with a process of time and the term initially civil services was coined to differentiate company employees involved in commercial matters from those serving in the military and navy so this was the basic meaning which was was there from the starting point of view that the company employees which were involved in the commercial matters they were known as civil servants however the others were from uh, they were not from the uh, military or they were not serving in the military or the navy over time the civil services servants were interested with additional responsibilities and authorities and cornwallis was the first person was the first governor general after warren hastings who increased the horizon of the civil servants so cornwallis serving as the governor general between 1786 to 93 was the pioneer in establishing or is structuring the civil services so he may aim to co combat corruption by increasing the salary of the civil services so civil servants so that they do not indulge into a corrupt practices if you increase the salary what he uh, what he thought of vigorously enforcing regulations against the engaging in private trade so you don't have to uh, what cornwallis wanted to do that the civil servants who are employed by the east india company they should look after the company's trade they should not look after their own trade so that the corruption should end he is he prohibited civil servants from accepting gifts and or bribes he implemented promotions based on seniority so seniority based on promotions so that the officials should have the uh, motivation to, to work harder now after him wellesley was the another governor general who served from 1798 to 1805 and he established fort william college to train the new recruits so don't get confused that fort william college was for education it was for education but for the civil servants only however in 1806 the court of directors that is the branch or the office set up by the uh, english east india company this approved this wellesley's college and instead they established East India College at Haileybury in England provided two years of training to recruits. Now, this was the very problematic thing. Why? Because civil servants are were being trained in England only. They were not being trained in India. So, how they will get to know the root problems, the root causes, or the main fundamental problems of India if they are going to trade in Britain? So, this was the Wellesley's role. Uh, however, the Wellesley's idea of Fort William College has been disapproved. then the charter act of 1853 further pushed the service civil servants that he marked the end of the east india company's practice of patronage mandating and recruiting hence for to conduct it through an open competition now the civil servants uh, now the civil service uh, servants will be uh, admissioned or will be recruited through an open competition based exam not by the east indian company uh, because there was also one problem that east india companies all the stakeholders uh, they only get uh, their sons or their relatives employed in the as the civil servants so from the outset indians were barred from holding any high ranking positions cornwallis famous stated every native of hindustan is corrupt so indians were totally barred from sitting in these competitive exams now by the charter act of 1793 this reserved all position work So 500 pound of the covenant civil services of the company. So the salary was initially was the 500 pound. The reason for the exclusion of Indians included that the belief that only the English will be able to administer the people of India better. 
the perceptions that india were indians were incapable untrustworthy and indifferent the intense competition among the europeans for lucrative positions making it unnecessary to offer such roles to the indians so the indians were not in, it considered itself indians were not at all considered only for the position so further about the open competition that was the other thing but at the first stage only they were not considered so although the charter act of 1833 this tried to open this civil services exams to the indian as well however this was only a uh, lip saying or you can say this was just a written uh, thing but in reality there was no opening of civil services to the indians so this was never effectively implemented following the indian rebellion of 1857 when indians demanded a share in higher services the proclamation of 1858 1858 that is by queen victoria's proclamation this declared britain intention to include indians freely and impartially in the civil services position however this was not a easy path till now on ahead also so then an indian service civil services act of 1861 was passed and this act reserved specific positions of civil services with examinations conducted in england conducted in english languages focusing on classical studies of greek and latin now this was the main thing they opened this civil services exams to the indians as well but the criteria was such but the syllabus was such that indians were not indians were not at all in a favorable position to clear this type of exam because english was the major focus language secondly if you learn 